Uh, these first two pictures here, um, there's a lot more hair on my head anyway, that's uh, for sure. But no, these were my early days with the Irish team. This one would have been um, under 15. Um, we've played our first couple of games up in up in the AUL in Dublin. And uh, this one then was when part of the victorious um, under 16 squad when we won the European Championships. And we beat Italy in the final up in Scotland. The tournament was, was held and uh, we went on a great run. Playing against the likes of Portugal, Spain, obviously beating Italy in the final was um, was a big, big, big moment for us and for a lot of players in that team as well. That's something I always felt was important when I did head across to, to play in England, that uh, any chance I got to come back and represent my country was was going to be a huge, huge moment. So always very proud and proud for my family as well. For me to, to lead out my country at the start of a major tournament was um, something obviously I'm immensely proud of. And when you're playing against the calibre, I, I played against them quite a few times um, during my career as well uh, with United and uh, with Ireland too. So you know, some good battles against them. And he's obviously he's still going strong at AC Milan now. You were aware beforehand, um, you knew the talents that these players possessed, but also you knew mentally, physically, everything you were going to be challenged. And uh, that's something obviously I enjoyed about the game as well, the mental side of things and the, the physical approach. You, you, had to be, uh, you had to be aware of all sorts of threats that they had. And I think Zlatan, one of Zlatan's big uh, threats was obviously trying to get inside the mind, trying to upset the player he was up against. and. Uh, but I was, I was aware of some of his tricks because uh, obviously I haven't played against him a good few times. You, you kind of treat him, you don't get him too angry. You, you treat him with kid gloves and thankfully we were able to stop him a lot of the time. Yeah, um, up in this picture here, um, I just uh, scored the equaliser against Germany. Um, obviously for a, for a qualifier for, a, for the Euro, European campaign and um, it was it was a huge moment, obviously on my hundredth cap, uh, to to get a goal like that. The goals didn't come too often <laughs> for the Irish team. I, that was my, it was, I think it was my third goal in a hundred games. So, uh, but thankfully when I did score, they, they were quite important. So, Wes Houlihan, I wouldn't say he hit a good cross. I'd say he hit, hit an okay cross to the back post, and Jeff Hendrick um, hooked hooked it back in. And I was able to steal a, steal a march on Matt Hummels um, and stuck it past the uh, Neuer in the goal. So it was a it was a nice finish, and uh, no, it was a big moment. But the most important thing, that, as I said afterwards too, we, was that um, it kept the momentum going for us in the group, and uh, we obviously ended up qualifying from that campaign too. So to get to another major tournament and to, to play a part in that is obviously very special. But. Nice to mark that occasion on your 100 cap to score, score an equaliser against the world champions um, was a very, very proud moment. Um, but the fans have always been, the, the numbers that they travel in, the, the welcome that they get from the other countries where they do travel to is, is very impressive. And yeah, they, I wouldn't mind being them a couple of times now myself now that I'm, I'll be able to go and watch the games because they seem to enjoy enjoy the festivities too that these countries have to offer too so maybe further down the line I'll be able to enjoy some of that. I think you can probably just about make out Edwin van der Sar. Um, there's not John O'Shea written on those gloves. It was we were away at uh, White Hart Lane and um, we'd gone I think it was uh, maybe three or four nil but Robbie Keane I think had gone in and he'd accidentally smashed into uh, Edwin van der Sar's nose and um, unfortunately Edwin wasn't able to continue and then Rio, Rio thought he was going to go in the goal but I had to remind him of my uh, a little bit of Gaelic football background so if it was nil-nil I don't think I would have been as keen to, <laughs> to go in goal but you know the scariest, obviously it, it, it felt okay to go in goal but the scariest bit was just taking the kickouts because when you're turning back and facing the opposition fans, obviously you're getting a you're getting a nice welcome from them. But just it, it was a weird scenario, and thankfully too, uh, I made a couple of couple of saves. I managed to stop uh, Robbie Keane on a on a one v one as well, um, and that came in handy because we were going on international duty afterwards. So 
I was able to remind him of that. But thankfully Edwin recovered quite quickly and uh, I, came, I came out for one cross. Uh, I was awful. It was uh, I, I give out the keepers now for flapping that across, but it's, <laughs> it's exactly what I did. Uh, Ronaldo, the way he used it, especially the free kicks from out wide uh, and quite a tight angle, generally he used to ignore everybody in the box and try and score. Um, that was it. obviously he did do on many occasions, but what I always found was the keepers found it difficult because of the pace the ball used to come in at. And um, I'd been alive to it a few times and the ball had never bounced back to me, but it was, uh, I think Gerard, I seen Gerard Carragher and Peter Crouch were, he's just out of shot in this picture, um, were the three kind of in a zonal area. And I managed to kind of just run across the three of them and the ball, Pepe Reina, spilled the ball out. And I don't think you see the ball in the picture, I just about to do, just heading in past Carragher's head there. Thankfully I hit the roof of the net in front of the cup. Uh, but no, look, to, to score the winner at Anfield, Manchester United against Liverpool um, was was a huge moment for me. And, uh, live long in the memory. I think, yeah, as you can see from some of the pictures in the crowd, some are not sure. Some are thinking, surely not John O'Shea scoring the winner against us. You can see the reaction of some of them, it's brilliant. Um, I don't know, there's one fella smiling, he might be a United fan in, the, in disguise there. And I just I had a feeling because of the way he scores, he likes to play, he always wants to pass forward, a bit of imagination, so I made a run. And <laughs> thankfully none of the Arsenal players tracked me. The scores, he found me. And uh, it, believe it or not, I'd actually, the week or two beforehand in training, I tried a few chips like that. One or two had come off, but plenty, <laughs> plenty hadn't come off. And uh, I could just imagine the reaction um, if, if it hadn't have come off uh, from, from a certain Scottish man. He, he would have gave me a, a, bit of a, a bit of a rollicking, but thankfully it did and it sailed over. I think it was Almunia. Almunia was in goal and uh, it nestled, nestled just in the top corner on the far side. So, look, it was a, it was a special moment. <laughs> Everyone talks about the celebration afterwards, um, thinking I was in shock. <laughs> I thought I was offside. It wasn't that. I was hoping the camera would pan out of it. I was trying, it was my worst Eric Cantona impression ever of that chip from she I think it was Sheffield United. Um, but I definitely Mr. Cantona did it, did it a lot better. But that man obviously was, was very influential. Every decision I made in my career early on, he was obviously a big, big part in it, whether to go out on loan, whether to stay, uh, things like that. And thankfully, uh, when I got my chance, when he put me in, because that was the big thing he said to me, Initially, I, I can't trust you yet for the first team. And uh, it was after each loan spell then, he, the trust was growing and growing, and then finally, he put me in the team. And uh, he, he didn't trust me too much. He put me in the team at left back, first of all. <laughs> but no, because obviously the competition was fierce um, to get into a team like that at the time. So uh, anywhere I could get in, and that's what I did. I, I got in at left back. If you had to say that to me when I was joining the United that I was going to play for the first team at left back, I would have said you were a bit crazy, but that's where I did my work with the, the coaches and improved on my left foot and got into the team and had plenty of success along the way, so big, big, big part, if not all of it, was down to that man. And he made the players realise that, that when we did have some success, whether it be a cup or a league, um, that he said enjoy the night, enjoy the moment, but we'd be quickly is uh, quickly dusting ourselves down to go again. And how he did that then was also increasing the competition where it'd be younger players coming up, pushing in the squad, or where it could have been a 40, 50 million pound signing to come and put pressure on the boys to, to stay in the team and obviously improve that quality in the training and the competition. And that maintained the standards that everyone set for each other. And obviously down at, uh, over in Moscow, it was uh, an amazing finish, obviously. Um, to, to, to be involved in that European Cup success, um, it was it was incredible because we we've been knocking on the door uh, for for a good while in, in that competition, and you see some of the players there involved. Um, it was an incredible night. I was on the bench that night as well, but if, I was very close to coming on an extra time. Um, it was Carlos Quiroz, he was the assistant at the time to Sir Alex and uh, I, 
I've been told to go out and warm up, but alongside um, you know, the Brazilian Anderson, and uh, just at the last minute, I don't know whether they thought with penalties in mind that maybe Anderson was going to be better than me or whatever, but Anderson came on and thankfully he scored. He scored his penalty. I wouldn't have said it was his best uh, ever penalty that he took. It was quite scruffy, but thankfully it went in. The rest is history, but no, that was a special special group of players that we had then. It was a special night. Obviously, it was late in Moscow. The rain, we, we partied late into the night in Moscow, but by the time everyone landed back in Manchester, I think uh, there, was, there wasn't too many more celebrations in Manchester because everyone was so wrecked. Uh, we, we went so late into the night in Moscow. It was a very, very strong uh, family unit at times, on and off the pitch at Sunderland. And, this moment here, we'd, uh, we'd, we'd just been to uh, it's the second leg of the, the League Cup against Manchester United, and um, it's Vito and only there he's hiding underneath all the all the bodies. But we'd we'd won on penalties. <laughs> it was probably one of the worst penalty shooter shootouts I've ever ever seen. But thankfully we came out on top. That's it was it was one of the one of the highlights. Obviously when you go back to Old Trafford. And you're thinking you're going to be up against it, and obviously which we were at times, uh, but we managed to dig in. And I think we've been the previous round we beat Chelsea too, so I think you could you could say we definitely deserve to get to the final if you beat Chelsea and Manchester United. But unfortunately, um, Manchester City was just one too far. Um, there's bees there, the goalie coach, running on. He was obviously t trying to take all the credit for for Vito saving saving the penalties, but um, no, look, it was as I said, it was a good. A good group and some good memories as long as some tough ones too, but it's one of them that I think hopefully will in the next stage of my career will be will prove crucial to to learning and coping with different things that happen. It's obviously coming to the end of my it's the end of my career, my professional playing career. And there was a nice moment that was organised by by all the lads and obviously unbeknownst to me I wouldn't have been I wouldn't have been very happy now if I, that's it's not my style to kind of take part in something like that. But when it did happen and afterwards, when you look back at it, it was a very nice moment and I think uh, Paul McShane was involved in a bit of, a bit of the organisation behind it. But um, no, look, as you said, it, it took a while. It looked as if the ball wasn't, go, wasn't going to go out of play, but thankfully I got on for a few minutes. I'd been nursing a calf injury uh, for, for a few weeks to make sure I was just about able to get through. No, look, it was, a, it was a very proud moment, especially just at the end to get a reception like that from Obviously, my own teammates, but from from Birmingham as well, it was a it was a nice moment, and to have obviously my family, wife and kids out around the pitch at the end too was uh, was very special. But it was uh, also part of part of me realizing too that the next step was uh, wasn't too far away. But for me, the the coaching side of things, my obviously when I was younger, very young, I would have gone and helped my dad a little bit. My dad was involved with Ferry Bank where he was uh, a manager all through different age groups and then a chairman of the club and chairman of the school boys and stuff like that so I was always chasing him around going to matches different things so uh, to be to be involved in football I thought was definitely after I started playing or finished playing was something that I thought I was definitely going to be involved in what capacity I wasn't probably too sure as yet but no, look, to be involved with the first team, a first team level is is amazing, and that's the that's the level you want to want to be involved with. And look, who knows what happens then in, in the future? But at the moment, I'm very happy learning from the great people that at Reading that I'm working with, and hopefully, long may that continue.